Okay. Thank you, Ramuitz, for doing this talk with us on Plurals in the Media. We first want to say welcome to all of you in your system, and we hope you have a great interview with us or like talk with us, um, and that everyone in your system feels welcome. Uh, if you want to switch, you can switch, of course. Um, if you don't want to, that's also okay. And uh, if anything if you, makes you feel uncomfortable, please let us know and we will cut it out of this video for you. So maybe we start with why we decided to make this topic the keynote session for the Plural Positivity World Conference. Um, so well, once we participated in the bigger media and we got a lot of non-disclosure agreements that we had to sign, we realized that that was the reason why other plurals hadn't spoken out more clearly about their negative experiences and what really happens behind the scenes when you participate in big media. And because of that, we thought it would be a good topic to go over and inform people in the community um, what happens, but also how they can participate safely or most safely in uh, bigger media. So maybe you can share a bit on why you decided to participate in this video. Yeah. Just first of all, hey everyone, we're the Redwoods. Uh, we're coming to you from Northern California. First of all, just thank you so much for having us. Really a big honor to see this conference grow year after year, uh, to see the Plural Association growing, um, your own presence, you know, uh, seeing some of the media pieces you were in and then uh, getting to talk to you about the behind the scenes. I'm just really excited uh, for people to hear about it. Uh, and same, like when I've been, when I was on the BBC radio uh, and other pieces, we, we talked a lot about both before and after. One of the things that I'm gonna try to do in this session is slow down a little bit and spend time with different system members. And I think that's a testament to that this is a plural created platform and it's rare to get to talk about uh, singlet dominated media in a plural friendly, plural driven way. And I think we're figuring out as a community, this is Eliza speaking, we're figuring out as a community what it means to be in the media and what it means to be authentically ourselves. And to what extent can we push the boundary of what it means to be in media and on the other hand, to what extent are we stuck in some of the expectations and his historical representations uh, or stereotypes of being plural? Does anyone else want to add anything? This is Joy. Yeah, it can often feel like switching or being inconsistent or taking time to communicate internally in a live interview uh, on radio, for example, isn't okay. And so I was really excited to come and talk to you as a system that we know as plurals, two plurals, hey, everyone at home, um, about what it's like to try to get an opportunity and to try to make the most of it and then to have it come out sometimes in ways that are really exciting and sometimes in ways that are disappointing and sometimes usually a combination. But ultimately, I'm gonna let someone else take this. Go for it, no, you got it. Okay, sometimes because I'm younger, I don't wanna make like the big point. The big point though is, the big point is that it's powerful to reach tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, tens of millions of people and it's okay to do so imperfectly. It's always gonna be imperfect. And a conference like this is an opportunity for us to think, what do we want the future of plural media to be? And I think that's what we're gonna be imagining here today and learning from the lessons of where we've been. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing, Joy. So can you give people the big picture of the media that you all have participated in? Definitely. Many people know us from one particular YouTube video. Let's see how many views it has right now. Uh, Anthony Padilla, I spent a day with multiple personalities or dissociative identity disorder, has 13,121,000 views. Pretty exciting. Nice. Uh, about a year before that, I was on the BBC radio. Uh, here's a 
video of me and then some words by a psychologist that they stuck over me. And it was also a live interview. Um, so those were both as the Redwoods, but it's also important to know that we run a nonprofit organization called Mask Oakland. And here's a little article. Not everyone can escape the smoke outside. Here's how to support them. And it's about our work uh, fighting for the respiratory health of unhoused people in Northern California uh, during the fires. A lot of media around this project I've been doing for a few years. But what's exciting about this article is it's the first time, even though we came out to many, many different journalists, uh, we usually use our kind of singlet sona name, Quinn Jasmine Redwoods. Um, but this time they quoted us as Quinn Jasmine Redwoods, a transgender disabled plural activist. I've also been Queen Jasmine Redwoods in the Washington Post, New York Times, The Guardian. Some of them knew I was plural or not. Some of them published it or not, um, but only like, actually only that one article published it. So one of the points that I wanted to make is that there's a lot of plurals in media, but there's not a lot of out plurals in media. The reason why it got published then, I think it's because I was confident enough at that point to just say, yeah, Quinn Jasmine Redwoods, and how do you identify? Oh, a transgender disabled plural activist, you know? And they're like, oh, well, it would be weird to cut out the thing. <laughs> Maybe that's, but it's less known, you know? So that's the first uh, known publication of, of the term plural activist in something that shows up as under the news or Google News, you know, search results. So that's pretty big. So definitely if you feel comfortable and you're giving an interview in a non-plural telling your life story context, feel free to just throw in that you're uh, plural as part of your other identities, you know, and maybe they'll print it and maybe that'll be a few more people hear this concept of, What's a plural activist? It's kind of funny to get published as a plural activist and not plural activists because <laughs> it's a singular plural activist, which is just a hilarious kind of like thing. But yeah, so we did the BBC radio interview, the big YouTube video um, that reached millions. We've been in a few smaller videos and, you know, have the opportunity to be uh, in, in your video. And we also like have a blog and do conferences and other things that maybe reach a few hundred or a few thousand people. You've uh, done some, you've done some interesting pieces that were definitely unique, particularly uh, in your location, mm. pretty landmark pieces. Can you yeah. talk about that? Yeah, there isn't that much media out there in Dutch um, about the ID or plurality. Uh, there's nothing about plurality. <laughs> I wanted to respond first to you being quoted as a plural activist. Um, we were interviewed for the Dutch news when we joined a protest for better mental health care in the Netherlands. And we made sure to say that we have DID. We didn't talk about plurality. We talked about having DID and that because of our trauma, we aren't getting therapy. And they cut out that we have DID and we got really upset. And so um, the next time we saw the re same reporters and we were like, hey, why did you cut that out? And they said, we weren't sure we could share your medical history. And I was like, oh, that's an interesting point. Hmm. Um, so we've been on the news. <laughs> we've also participated in uh, a Dutch TV show. We have a lot of non-disclosure disagreements. Uh, disagreements, yes, it is disagreements. But <laughs> <laughs> disagree with your non-disclosure yes, agreements. for yeah. sure. Um, but you have to follow them. Yeah. Yeah, so I have to be kind of careful with what I say, and I can't name really the names of the things I have been in as to you know, not violate my contracts. We've recently been interviewed for a video project that they say will reach 65 million people. So we're super excited about that um, coming awesome. out. And um, yeah, we've partici participated in some bigger um, written articles uh, with, with bigger news outlets. And we hadn't done that before. So that's very exciting as well. Yeah, I think that's basically the things that we have done in the bigger sphere of media. We also have our own media, of course, that we release. And we feel a lot more comfortable with that because we have all the control. <laughs> right. Yeah, this is Ezra. That's pretty interesting. Who am I speaking with, by the way? Do you want to share? Yes. I'm good conscious with a lot of people, so I'm kind of blurry. Okay. Um, but it's Rose and Bailey in the front right now. Okay. So Rose and Bailey and others, many right. others. Usually it's created, it's controlled by singlets, making media for singlets and... 
so we're dealing with, you know, lacking context, cultural context, and also trying to reach a different audience sometimes than we are when we're making stuff for plurals. Can you talk about, for people who don't know, like just how, on a, I know we're gonna give stories and stuff, but like on a basic level, how much control do you have over one of your own YouTube videos versus participating in someone else's project? When I make my own YouTube videos, I don't have full control either because obviously it's going to be on the public internet. Um, we have the Plural Association community, which is a private community where I feel a lot more comfortable um, uploading more private videos. And also certain words or topics are hard to discuss on YouTube because of their like policies. But outside of that, I have full control, right? If I say something in the, in, when I'm recording and I don't like it, I can cut it out. No problem. Or I can retake it. No problem. In the big media, they say you can retake, we can retake any shot and you feel really comfortable. You're like, okay, <laughs> Whew, good. Then you assume they take the best shot, right? But they don't. <laughs> <laughs> they can use any of those shots and you have no say in it. And so they will edit it. And the contract says you have no, like you can't request edits um, and it's just the way it is. And so if you say something that you regret later, or if one of your headmates does um, or like overshares because they keep asking um, you to deepen out your answers for the questions yeah, they can use that. And also they can cut out half your story and only use like the shock effect or, um, you know, there we have had this experience where they cut audio fragments from different headmates and overlaid them on a different scene that was filmed on a different day. Oh, wow. So it seemed like we were all co-conscious when we were filming, but it wasn't happening at all. They just edited it that way and didn't say oh. that they edited it that way. So it looked like we were like rapid switching or something, but we weren't. Wow. Huh. So they're trying to like, it's almost like a hearing voices, special effect simulation yes. type cinematic. That's uncomfortable because the, yeah, that's relying on a lot of tropes. And I, that's one of the things that I've noticed too, in general is they're thinking about some comparison to the, to the horrible track record of movies and some comparison to very like clinical lens mm -hmm. uh, history of how we talk about this. And they throw those kinds of things in there. Like, I don't think on any of our channels, uh, we would like surprise a guest by like bringing on a singlet therapist afterwards and having that singlet therapist comment. Um, but uh, we've both experienced something like that and yeah. seen it happen to others and it is infuriating. Uh, well, I'll talk about that more later. Yes, me too. <laughs> okay, so- Do you have back... any good stories you wanna share? Oh, I was at a conference and I think a lot of people wonder like, how do you, how do you get on the radio or on a TV show or on a YouTube, on a big YouTube channel? How does that happen? So you know, also like NDAs and things like that. But I can talk about uh, the BBC interview. Uh, I have no contract there. So, <laughs> and um, so I was in the UK and in 2018 and I was at a conference and I was asking around, hey, you know, I'm traveling. Is there somewhere I could give a workshop that would be meaningful while I'm here? And someone suggested I go speak at this uh, trans youth group in London uh, by a large UK organization uh, and the UK trans organization. I said, great. And, you know, we were negotiating uh, and I said, hey, can you can you tweet that I'm out here because that, that would be good exposure to your audience. And so they did, you know, thanks to the Redwoods, you know, at Tremunity for coming out and doing this workshop with their youth about trans and mul being trans and multiple or, or however it was framed. And that must have been the reason why a few days later, I got a bunch of traffic from a turf forum linked to an article in a right wing newspaper talking about how it was like five paragraphs talking about uh, how the Redwoods were an example of what goes, you know, just like 
like that we are the apotheosis of of the the fears of turfs and it was very upsetting but also comical and i and i sent it around to my activist friends and we laughed at it and i got but it was also uncomfortable it was like strange but then i noticed in my inbox i had an invite saying hey uh we heard about you they didn't say where i'm my name is so and so from bbc i'd like to interview you and i was already back and i got like i was like wow is this a big opportunity like should i get on a plane and they're like no just you know, let us know next time you're in the UK. So it's like sitting in my brain for like a year. I'm like, oh, I hope we get back to the UK because that'd be really cool. Eventually it comes up where I get to be at a conference, hanging out, connecting with multiples. Uh, and it was an autism conference. And I, I went there to see if I could kind of like talk and connect. And it was very interesting. Turned out a lot of different people at this conference experienced some form of plurality and um, I don't identify as autistic, but, you know, just wanted to connect the larger like neurodiversity uh, worlds together. And it was very positive, very rich. And I was emailing the BBC people and saying like, hey, by the way, I'm, I'm in t you know, I'm nearby. And they said, OK, come in at like eight in the morning uh, to record this. Um, so I had to at the end of the conference, I went in, I went downtown, I got like dressed up nice like femme frilly things. You know, we, we tried to like do all the right things. You know, who's gonna be on there? What do we wanna look like? Um, you know, work together. We got there, we went, we got like a name badge. We were outside like the main BBC, like we felt so cool. You know, the logo, like the logo. And then there's like this nice like British man who's like talking, he's like, oh yeah, what's, what do you do? Oh yeah, sure, let me, yeah, da da da. And like just ride, his job was like to ride the elevator up with me. And then like, I go in and there's the host who's gonna like, um, you know, play my segment next week. I've researched her and she's done some decent stuff about some stigmatized topics. And I'm like, okay, I'm hopeful, hopeful. And I go into the booth and I do this whole interview with this woman and it's, it's nice. She's remote. I'm like talking to the camera while also being on, and it's like this, and, and we're like really working together as a system to like take calculated risks of like, who's, who's gonna front now? How are we gonna answer this? They ask us like, do you think this is a disorder? We give a really nuanced, like good answer, you know, uh, we're switching. We feel really proud. We're exhausted. We leave, we're, but we're like, we did it. And then we go and give like another workshop uh, that, that same day at a great organization. And then, you know, a week later, we're back in the States in our house with our housemates. It came out. Okay, it's time to listen to it. First thing, it plays. And it, the voice of the show host is a different person. It's a guy. And he's got a kind of like skeptical tone. He's like, oh, we've got this thing, the Redwoods. Uh, let's see what this is about. And I'm, and I'm like, ooh. And then they play the segment and it's like edited down and it's pretty nice. And then, <laughs> and then uh, by the end of the segment, my housemates are saying, I'm so sorry, Redwoods. Because what came next was oh my god I, this i hate this part of the story <laughs> um <clears throat> okay this is a little i don't want to say what my name is but i was in that interview i don't think they included me in the edit but this man comes on and he says ah oh, we're getting after our segment right oh we're getting all these text messages saying that we've been conned that this person is a con artist and that they're just like faking da, da, da. to fill us in more we're gonna have so-and-so from the royal society of psychiatry on and it was like what <laughs> no one told me this is i'm gonna switch but yeah that was annoying <laughs> thank you anonymous little <laughs> um, uh, yeah this is the yeah, i just want to say you know it's it's that that moment right there. It's like a creative way of helping it be like inclusive but safe for everyone. So I think that's nice. And it's thanks for letting us experiment here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So this is Joy. They brought on this psychiatrist, and 
everyone was misgendering us. Everyone was calling us the H pronoun, which most of us don't like. And collectively, you know, we use they, them. And, and we were, yeah, it was just inappropriate. And, uh, you know, this fellow, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, and then his comments were like, not all completely terrible, the psychiatrist, but then the radio host was like, kind of egging him on, like, how does this person even have a job? Like, what is this even like? Just kind of like being reactionary. And it was so frustrating. And people were like listening to it and really going with us because I'd been anticipating for this for like a year, right? And so I was really disappointed because I didn't have any signs. Now we kind of have seen that the BBC is largely transphobic in many ways. But at the time, I just thought the individual people I'm interacting with and vetting seem nice. So how can it add up to this like negative experience? Yeah, we remember that interview and we thought it was, you all did a really good job. We thought it was really interesting that that psychiatrist said that it's an American phenomenon. And oh, right. uh, you want to share right. a bit about that? Yeah, so there were a couple comments he made that were amazing. Uh, <laughs> Uh, in a problematic way. Like, wow. So this is Z. Uh, as the person with an almost British accent, I will answer this funny question about Americans and from a British uh, expert. So he said, in my 20 years of practice, I've only seen 11 cases. Mm -hmm. And in my field, uh, we often see this as a, more of an American phenomenon, which I've also heard from other people uh, in Europe who say, oh, it's mostly American. Well, we thought that was mostly American. And maybe it was covered sensationally in American media in the 90s and 80s. Uh, but it's definitely a worldwide phenomenon as far as, as far as we know and as far as research is telling us, you know? Yeah, highest uh, research is actually from Turkey, 6.6% prevalence. Mm. So, and we had just been at a conference with mostly British people where we had met 11 systems or more. Uh, it wasn't a plurality conference. It was a neurodiversity conference, you could make, but in one week we'd met more systems or as many systems in the UK as this man had in his entire career. And it just shows us that uh, plurals who are out there engaging with the community, meeting other systems like them are just accumulating knowledge and expertise and connections exponentially faster than many of the longtime experts who get frequently called to show up on national media, which is partly why it's so infuriating when a random therapist or doctor or psychologist is brought on TV uh, to repeat very, very stale figures and facts and opinions about our experience without our consent. Yes, that's the important thing, without our consent. Or a chance to reply. They didn't right. say hey, we're going to bring this person on. What do you think, Redwoods? You know, we could have, that could have been maybe interesting. I mean, it would have been very combative and <laughs> they probably, you know, but uh, has, it, it, I, I feel like it would have more, been more empowering than... Uh, It'd make for know, a very good TV on, show. Yeah. yeah, sure. You know? Uh, yeah, exactly. Entertaining, right? Like you, right. you, you, you want watch that. Substance. Yeah, <laughs> the, plurals debating, but I think that's... Because society depends on this idea of lived experience as inferior to objective mm. outside expertise. And if you put us at the same table and we actually get a chance to discuss it and we show them up, then it's a little bit of a challenge to the structures of power. And also we're oh so fragile and we can't handle the debate and discussion. Um, I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, yeah. So I'm not the only system member of a system that has stories about engaging with the media and it going sideways. Can you grace us with uh, any of the behind the scenes tidbits and details from your experiences, Stronghold? Yeah, I gotta like pick and choose and make some things so I don't break any contracts. Um, but yes, definitely. We also had an experience where um, we, we had, in a meeting that was recorded, we, we said that we don't want to participate if there is going to be a therapist and that if they invite a therapist, it has to be someone we know and we talk with them up front and we agree on what and what we aren't going to say. 
And um, they said, we never work with therapists. Uh, definitely not if they don't treat you. And I felt really relaxed, right? So yeah. I was like, okay, I'll participate. Yeah. And then they had a therapist. Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah. After, after my, like, same as you, right? They show your clip. And then all of a sudden there's a therapist there. <laughs> what? And uh, that person called us little people instead of headmates, which was like such a bizarre Oh, term. like the original and that person's little people? Yeah, little Some... people. Yeah. 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 Um, and, um, and, but the worst thing for me was that she ended her like segment. They asked her, so is it real? And she said, well, for them it's real, but like, obviously it's not really real classic and i classic. was just like what <laughs> yeah <laughs> and that That's was the an end right? guidelines as well yeah that was the end of the the session i was like ah, we tried so hard to make empowering content right and then someone comes in and just like on un- undoes that or tries to at least um, and that's been yeah. really hard. We've been misgendered many times. Now we get it in our contract, what our genders are. So they can't right. really do that. We have been, uh, kind of like dead named or like just they, so they like ask you, so we introduce ourselves as strong old and they go like, so who are we talking to now? And from that moment on, you're that person in their mind for some reason. And they like, like whoever was there first is now there main contact person which makes oh. no sense for us because we like switch so many times we don't we've really have a host anymore we've signed an nda contract in a parking lot after filming for eight hours that wasn't very smart don't do that don't take that as advice we so, you, so can you 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 just to like oh I, so you felt like they intentionally put a contract in front of you after you were exhausted when you had you didn't have the spoons to really like go through it or the energy to really like, so uh, that wasn't really like a fair time to put you on the spot to agree to a bunch of terms. Right. I'm not sure if they did it on purpose, but it definitely happened. Um, And I felt very pressured and because we had already filmed, I was like, if I don't sign, they will just use all of this footage and they can do whatever. And I don't like, we had agreed to film again and I didn't want to miss out on that opportunity because I had more to say. And so I was like, okay, sure. I'll sign. And then Mm. some of these contracts say pretty bizarre things. Like I signed an NDA that says they can show my footage anywhere in the universe, not on earth in the universe. Uh, that's pretty epic. wow lawyers amazing right uh so i expect to be like on mars soon and uh <laughs> <laughs> wow. um, yeah that's interesting and then like the other country that i signed in a parking lot says that they can show my footage worldwide um mm. all of it like not just their edited version but all of it and they can right. sell it for money and, yeah, yeah. and I would have liked to know that up front because I don't like that idea at all. Yeah. And so after that, like after we've read the contract, we also changed how we, what we said and how we presented. It made us less authentic. Yeah, I'm sorry that happened. And, and you know, I've heard some of this from other conversations with you, but I don't think I realized maybe quite the sense of cumulative beat down. It felt like. Um, Can I say uh, something? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. It's Emma. I was on the TV once and uh, I talked up front with them and I explained that I'm an important system member and that I don't do a lot of good things for the Plural Association nonprofit. For those who don't know, I lead the department for system kits. And so I think of policies that we can implement and I try to get them to make all our videos like friendly for us like safe yeah. and um i wanted to talk about that on the tv but instead they just wanted me to do like kids things yeah and i didn't like that and then when i said my age they asked me how old are you and apparently i was too old so they cut out my age and i was really upset mm. about that that was weird and then also I said I would only do it if I could also talk about my work. And they said yes to me, but they didn't do it and they cut it out. Do you want to say a little bit about the work you do now? I run the 
support association for system leaders, system kids in the plural association community. And also I have edited over 150 videos. Yeah, for this the is what I wanted system. you to talk about. <laughs> so like I've been like, I haven't edited all the videos because some were too difficult for me because mm-hmm. like I got emotional, but they helped me. But most of the videos I have edited and I will also edit this video and that's yeah. my work. And I'm very excited about that. And I'm young, but I've been young for 20 years. So yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, I like it, what I'm doing right. No one is forcing me. Um, it's a little more I, complex than a kid in a candy store. Yes. Yes, sure. definitely. We had an experience where one of our uh, littles, they, the producers knew about uh, that person and that person didn't appear in the video. And then at the end, they kind of said, hey, did so-and-so not feel comfortable? And it felt a little strange that they would kind of ask after that person. It, it almost felt like they were uh, seeking to make a spectacle of that particular system member, like that, like littles in the stereotypical way of portraying systems um, both need to be like kind of one type of they have one type of function which is kind of like the wow look how young and strange it is this there's this young person when it's like actually there are young people but they are there they have the freedom to choose uh with the guidance of the larger system whether or not they want to be out in a particular context and you know we don't just conform to like your stereotypical cartoon version of like what you want us to be all the time, you know, um, whatever you saw in some interview or, you know, it's just echoing these same tropes again and again, which I think is why it's so important to talk about this stuff because, you know, maybe another system out there watching this will, will, when they're in a situation where they feel some pressure for their, particularly for their littles to be a particular way, they can push back and hopefully that will contribute to, you know, a safer experience for them, um, you know, that they know they might experience that going in. And also like, if you see an opportunity to talk in a nuanced way about the experience of being uh, a younger system member, uh, that that's a really valuable thing to add to the narrative because we haven't seen a lot of that done well um, in media. Yeah, this is Drake. Hey, Drake. Um, hey, I was on TV in a makeup store of all places, mm. um, which is like, why? Uh, I've, I've Do you like interested... makeup? No, not at all. Uh, <laughs> they just wanted to like see how a guy would react in a makeup store, which oh, is Oh, so like... they brought like, uh, so they had like someone who likes makeup out. Yeah. And then they and then were they like, oh, switch. by the way, let's bring a man. Yes. Did they, they, did they really like, was it that straight up? It was, was like, really like that. Yes. Like worse than that. Yes. yes. Wow. Um, and, and I got really sarcastic. Like I asked him if he didn't like makeup. Um, yeah. you know, I was like, Hey, what do you want to pick? They cut it out. Of course. Um, stereotypes of age, stereotypes of gender. Right. right? Like it's like, yeah. it's, it's like, Oh, you must be a dude who's like this or yeah. And like, then we were on the, on a radio episode. And uh, Strongle did a really good job for us negotiating because they wanted us to switch and it would only be like a, f- a few minutes and we weren't comfortable with that. Right. Eventually we made an agreement that Bailey, I think, and Amy would participate and that was it. And then Amy was on the line um, with, this, with this presenter, right, recording. And all of a sudden he said like, hey, so I also know there's someone in your system named Drake. And I like had a panic attack right away. It was like, oh my God, how does he know me? Like I didn't make the connection that he watched a video mm-hmm. and I just like freaked out. And luckily Amy was able to say like, yeah, that's not going to happen. We didn't agree upon that uh, for which I was really grateful, but it was so uncomfortable to have that happen. And so yeah. rude. like, I don't know Sy- this person. Yeah. System yeah. members having each other's backs. And mostly I wanted to say that it's not just protecting your littles but also like other people even like protectors mm-hmm. in your own system i'm a protector but that freaked me out like i didn't right. want to deal with that yeah definitely like in a trans feminine body with system members who are men and we we definitely are always like 
because we've experienced it in our personal life and in with healthcare. Uh, we haven't experienced it yet in media that I can remember, but you know, uh, maybe somebody asked once, I can't even remember, um, you know, oh, you're transitioning. Like how do the guys feel about that or whatever? And like, it's not just the question, but it's the tone. This you is know. Allie, like, hi. Yeah. Ultimately, the stereotype of multiplicity is like, not just being overt, but highly contrasting. So they're trying to like put, maybe they were trying to put you in that situation where it's like, you know, if you go back to like the old reports, 1700s, 1800s, 1900s, there was this woman who was like this. And then she was like this other person in this other language with this other personality with this other, and they wanna have that huge contrast. But I think a lot of the beauty of systems is in the subtle, like, sure, great. Contrast is great. Higher voice, lower voice, all that's wonderful. I want people to be free to be as overtly themselves as possible, but don't just bring us on your show or whatever and try to have us like explicitly um, like demonstrate contrast for you. And we feel that in ourselves sometimes too, like, oh, who should I like, what, how should I sequence these system members so that people can experience contrast? And sometimes the littles like uh, when we give more small audience talks, they like to come out and, but that's empowering, right? When you use that element of surprise and you're in control of it, um, that's a powerful tool. But if it's like kind of being drawn out of you or forced, uh, it's not well, fun. Days, though. But they kept adding on. Like first it would be two days and it became three days. And then they were right. like, actually, when I explain better what the idea is. And I was like, okay, please come over. And they right. did. So then we filmed the fourth day. And then they cut that almost all of that footage and hired a therapist. And I'm pretty sure they paid that person too. So I, got, right. I was And really you upset. were not necessarily you were not paid more for more i was not paid days. anything i've never right. been paid for any so more and more that and more days. In. yeah 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 that's also something that really frustrates me though that they ask you to explain plurality and then they are gonna in their like episode of article they're gonna put their own version anyway for yeah. example one of the things we participated in they said that because we could not cope with the trauma that we went through we created mm -hmm. the id and I was like, it is so the opposite. <laughs> yeah. um, and so like, that's really frustrating to me if I'm explaining well, what is plurality for me? Back to the topic of pay. It definitely feels like when somebody's being in, in a multi-day, 25 hours thing that you're describing that someone should be taking care of them. And so, you know, I guess that's a plug to support the plural association because... <laughs> Uh, people are busting their butts, uh, trying to put themselves out there. And I think that's the thing. It's like when a, when a final video comes out, someone like Stronghold has poured their not only on camera time, but their off camera time discussing as a system, how are we going to handle the next sit down? How are we going to do this planning all these things, trying to get it right, trying to like anticipate the editor's mindset, even though the editor is like, and the producer and the host are all like, I'm on your side. You're trying to do some kind of game theory of like, I know they might do something different. So how can I say it in a way that they won't be able to, you know, just so much work, so much work. And then the final product comes out and it reaches millions of people, right? And that's awesome. Uh, you know, people in the Netherlands, uh, people on YouTube, you know, people on BBC radio, like because of us combined, a lot of people have heard just someone who, what I think they can't take away from us is that we love ourselves. Like that mm. we, I think they can't really take away that we're kind of proud or very proud of who we are. I think that those are the qualities that come through. That's like why, why I'm motivated to keep getting back out there because maybe they'll try to spin me or twist me into some kind of something. But at the end of the day, our presence can reflect that like, we're pretty chill. And I think if, if, if the only message that like gets out about uh, plurals when we do media is like, oh, they're pretty chill, they seem interesting. Like that would be a great shift from like yes. the, the stereotype, you know? So uh, speaking of independent plural media and supporting your local plural artists, I wanna say that I'm wearing a shirt uh, that the Stronghold created and sell on a store. Uh, that they'll probably figure out some fancy way to edit over. Please do. And it says, we the many. 
in this kind of like cool Pac-Man style. Got a little ampersand on the sleeve, but it's cool. And then if, and you know, the little logo, my long hair covers the back if I'm feeling sneaky, um, but I can have the plural association with me all the time. Yeah, so get their shirts. Thank you, love it. Uh, so let's talk about contracts because they exist. You might get, so I was handed a contract right before shooting the Padilla video. It was fine, I signed it. It was mostly about, uh, you know, don't disclose the video before it comes out, which totally makes sense for pretty much any media piece, right? There's, they want to be able to have the thunder of it's coming out. And then you mentioned some other terms. Have you ever had to, I didn't really ha ever have to face a contract where I was like, no, I need to negotiate because this is problematic. Um, can you talk about your experience with contracts? I know you've had a, uh, doing some of these bigger, longer video projects. It's been a more complicated process. What would you kind of, think that the other systems out there need to know if they get contracts put in front of them. Yeah. Thanks. Um, we've definitely signed a lot of uh, non-disclosure agreements and contracts for the media. I think the things we do now are things that we learned from our bad experiences. Mm. Um, like we figured that if you have a call like this with someone and you record it, that counts as a contract but then not really. So now we put it in paper. Uh, for example, our, our uh, system name that they have to use to collectively address us, but also our pronouns. Um, and we also try to get them to say something about um, switching that, that like we decide who, when we switch to whom we switch that they can only talk with people we have pre-negotiated. But then yeah. the way they actually put it in the contract was that stronghold is always in control. And I was like, that is so missing the point because I'm not always in control. <laughs> That's why I need to say the contract. <laughs> um, but yeah, we yeah. tried. Uh, but some of the like bad, uh, bad things that we had in contracts was that we can talk ne negatively about the show or the participants or the host or like anything like that. Uh, we can't ask for edits, um, including when they do things that are completely fake. Like that's just how it is now. Right. Um, you can't quit or change your mind and you have to participate in future media promotion events, that kind of thing. I uh, can't get paid, which like I'm not a fan of. I think plurals deserve to get paid for their for their media work and all their work. Oh, like you get no royalties off of anything they make from future. Yeah. Yeah. You release all I don't value. like that. Yeah. Like maybe on a YouTube channel. Sure. So the other things that I wanted to mention in the contract uh, part of the video was that you can't have an influence over where it is aired or published and what those people write or say about you. And some contracts say that they can sell my footage to like other people worldwide or show yeah. in the universe. Yeah. Um, you also can moderate the comment sections on other people's profiles, blogs, or channels, which is really hard. If I upload a video to my own YouTube channel, I am in control of the comment section. I can delete comments mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I can block ableist words. And I was highly disappointed to be on a disability specific show where the comment section allowed ableist language. Was it moderated? They, no, it wasn't moderated at all. And also they didn't block any words like ableist words that right. they, could have right. and should have um, definitely. So for done. you as a YouTuber who's, you know, dedicated a lot of time to, uh, you know, creating a safe space to then have your ideas and comments be kind of thrown to the comment wolves, uh, that must have been really upsetting. Yeah, for sure. And just like insulting. Yeah. Yeah. They like last minute change uh, the contract or, and it says then that you can't quit the contract. So they change it, but you can't quit. That's really right. horrible when that happens. Sometimes they try to trigger you on purpose or um, they like ask you if you can show the bad side of the ID or what it looks like when you get negatively triggered. Um, and you have to like explain that that is ableist and that you can't ask for that and that you're definitely not going to show that wow. on TV and they are going to ask you again and again and you got to keep saying the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I want one thing I want to say is that I think working with other activists to get referrals like 
so you broke new ground. You worked, you were on the, all these shows that no one in the plural community had ever been in uh, and that people didn't necessarily know much about because it, they were Dutch specific or, or, so you were kind of the test case. Um, in my case, Anthony Padilla had done a lot of videos about similar topics with that format. So I kind of was able to look at that, but because of getting burned on the BBC thing, the reason I was able to actually go ahead and commit to that opportunity was because other systems who knew Anthony's work said, no, I actually think that he could do a good job. So that is also sometimes what we need. If there is a good opportunity out there, uh, because there are so many negative experiences, we need to also have like pointers to more positive opportunities. Not that anything is going to be perfect, still singlets creating for singlets, but you know, a good experience is going to be a lot more worthwhile and more positive and something you can look back on as opposed to something that you spend all this energy on, but then you don't even actually want to share it because there's the, you know, I had, I had systems telling me with the BBC thing, like, I don't want to listen to it because I don't want to hear it go badly at the end when the whole thing happens to the psychiatrist. And I'm like, that's totally, you're right. You know, um, I want, I want, uh, our community to create things that people really like, like recognize that people who know almost nothing about this are thinking about it in this stereotypical way. I also have like hundreds of hours of experience listening to systems in discussion groups in person and online. And I want to represent all of that complexity, but we only have 30 seconds and to answer this one question. And it's just, it's, it's, we don't always get it right. Then we don't always get it right then that imperfect response gets imperfectly, sometimes maliciously twisted in uh, the media and then how it gets displayed, you know, many different, I don't know, it's, it's hard, but I think that it's important to keep pushing. I think yeah, same with Fusion. It wasn't aired because I made them cut it out. So I was on the radio. I have no contract, so I can say it. Um, I was on the radio and at the end of the interview, he said, good luck with becoming one person. Like out of the what? blue. And I was like, what? The <laughs> and I like, oh he wanted to hang up, right? And I was like, no, 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 no. Like, you cannot say that. Like, I like I have no desire for fusion. This is offensive. It's triggering. I can share your episode right now. And then the director of the show called me back and he was like, yeah, it's also pretty long. So we got to cut something. Do you have a preference? I was like, yes, cut out that last sentence. That was mm. horrible. Don't ever do that again. Mm. Yeah, that was really shocking. Like that interview was already really crappy, to be honest. Um, but then that happened. And then they wrote an article about us and they like misgendered uh, us and they used the wrong name. And we called the producer at 10 p.m. at night. Like, yo, I don't know, but this is not what we agreed upon. And he explained like, oh, yeah, that's like a completely different department who like writes these articles. They didn't know about our agreement, blah, blah, blah. And I was he, he was like, yeah, that's he just job. Googled you. And I was like, yeah, that's like not how this works. So they took it offline, luckily. Oh, wow. Good yeah. for you. It makes me think, you know, there, there's probably a lot of systems out here who having experienced those kinds of microaggressions uh, from therapists or from friends and family. And got to tell you, media people are in that same culture. And sometimes they're like weirdly plugged into it. Like you're saying, they're like, oh, I Googled this weird thing, but like they don't really have the full context and they didn't talk to you about plural politics. They just kind of were like, hey, I read this is the thing that happens. And, and you're just like, whoa, <laughs> that's, and that's just part of the problem and the work that our movement has to do is that there is so much junk in mm -hmm. every field about us, you know, yeah. uh, if there's anything but silence. So then, so, and the amount of silence means the junk speaks a lot louder. So in research, in media, in healthcare, you know, any, any, any piece of plural positivity uh, can go a long way. So, you know, I really applaud like people in every field who are, you know, participating in this conference, um, thinking about how to make a difference because the cool thing is, is that, you know, we are not two systems uh, who've been in a Hollywood movie or won 
uh, Pulitzer Prizes or, you know, huge media. Not yet. Uh, not yet, right? Stay tuned. Uh, next year. But yeah, next year. Okay, go win. <laughs> I'll win an Oscar. You win a Pulitzer Prize. Okay. Um, you want to talk a bit about your biggest media regret? So on some level, like no regrets, like we did it. We learned from everything that we did. And on some level, we regret that it hurt us so much when it didn't go the way we wanted it to. And that slowed us down from maybe getting back out there. But I want to work on going forward, just doing a lot more writing on my own time so that when a media interview does pop up, when an opportunity like that pops up, I have not just a general sense of what I want to say, but I have like the talking point, like honed, like, and I've used it and I've tested it. And not just like the way I spend five minutes talking about it in a presentation, but like the one-liners. Because So what about you? What do you, what do you regret? And what do you want to work on for next time? You're in the spotlight. <laughs> um, I will never sign a contract in a parking garage again. <laughs> okay, fair. <laughs> uh, that that's my biggest regret. Not so even not so much because I think that I, in an office I could have actually made a change to that contract, but just because I feel so bad about it because I like it's not okay to make someone do that. Yeah, it felt kind of non consensual. Right. Yeah. So uh, that's my that's my biggest regret. Um, and the thing I would do differently next time. Yeah, not that much, actually. I'm pretty proud of the work that I did. I feel like I didn't do anything wrong. I just feel like they edit things weird. And I remember a long conver- long phone conversation I had with you all where we practiced together on how we could form sentences with the plural association in the middle of the sentence so they couldn't <laughs> cut it yeah, because they kept yeah. cutting it out. What's yeah. one thing that you want plurals participating or want to participate in the media to know? What advice would you give them? So if you want to do media or you want to do activism and you think you might eventually end up in the media, one, just always be working on your internal communication. Uh, as Stronghold described, there's a lot of scenarios where, you're, where you'll have to make a quick decision uh, where someone might be out and then they're suddenly vulnerable. Um, the more you all can develop agreements in advance, but also be able to have someone kind of in the background supporting whoever's fronting, however you all do it, uh, be able to work as a team throughout the process. Uh, There's a lot of great people working on just systems working together as teams. Also create a support network. Maybe someone is gonna go out there and just on their own with knowing no other systems, create a piece of media that's both totally socially transformative and uh, really is a good experience for them and has only a positive response, but more likely it's gonna be hard to get there without working with other systems because that helps show that you're actually an expert or knowledgeable on the topic. Um, And also when there's a, comment negative storm or something small and subtle that only other systems would understand why it's disappointing. Uh, It's really important and valuable. Also, it's a lot more fun to celebrate and helps uh, spread the good stuff around when you know other systems. So just getting to know other systems, you know, you're doing a good job checking out a conference like this. And then just keep going. I think keep going and doing more stuff because uh, it's a huge learning experience. I think both of our systems um, and really everyone I've talked to, uh, you know, everyone's first talk that they give till, you know, when they're giving a huge presentation somewhere or same with everyone's first media interview. Uh, When I talked to the press for the first time about Mask Oakland versus uh, the 25th time, you know, I, I learned things and I'm still learning and it's, media like anything else navigating that is can be a lifelong journey so just keep going and you know reach out to us and hopefully we can build kind of collective wisdom on this topic the other thing this is joy i would say 
especially to trans plurals, like I look back on the Padilla video and I'm really glad we wore a dress. I'm really glad, like, it seems silly, but like, it's worth spending some time thinking about how you look. Not that you need to be like perfectly, like normatively look like, not like that, but for yourselves, it's worth like investing in your appearance in a way that you all feel good about. Um, because that image is going to be out there, uh, hopefully for a really long time. And um, so having your words and your thoughts and your presences together, but also like, you know, it's, it's how you look being well rested beforehand, like all that stuff, just like holistically taking care of your experience so that you can try to have a good time, try to think what's going to help us have a good time um, or have at least be a little easier, whether it's like, Oh, talking to a loved one before and after, um, having a team supporting you before and after. How about you all? I mean, uh, you've definitely learned a lot. What's, what's the wisdom you want to share with, with the, with the plural universe? universe. <laughs> um, so I think the most important thing that we want to share is that before you participate in the media, any form of media, right? Before you start a YouTube channel, before you start a blog, before you come on TV, Mm-hmm. sit down with your system and figure out together how to share your story authentically mm-hmm. with the goal of empowering others without crossing your own collective boundaries. Mm-hmm. And also, this is Skylar, by the way, one thing that I have had to learn was to not share the stories of other system members. Mm-hmm. Um like not just in one-on-one conversation, but especially in the media, that's so important. If they don't want to come out and share the story, the story is not to be shared. Mm. Um, and, and what I mm. used to do more so on YouTube than in the media is that I would share the story for them because I thought there was value in the story, but it's, it's not my story to tell. Mm. And I had to learn that the hard way. And I've heard my system in the past mm. um, by speaking over them. So I wanted to put that in here. And then you already mentioned it, keep going because there are going to be hate comments and there are going to be people even within the, our own community, people who don't agree with your vision or with what you have done or with like, not even how you have done it, but how they have edited it, but they don't realize that that's what happened. Right. Um, and for me, whenever I want to quit, which has definitely happened, um, I go back in my mind to when I was at the Infinite Mind Conference and I met Gene Reisman, who was like 80 something years old. Mm. And with tears in her eyes, she said to me, like, please continue, Stronghold, no matter what happens, because we mm. didn't in the 80s when the mm. when the panic was there, we all went back in the closet and hid. Mm. Don't mm. ever do that. Don't let them stop mm. you. And it was such an empowering moment for me that I like, I still feel it in my body when I think back of those moments. And so that's where I go when I want to quit. Um, and I think it helps for us to have the agreement with our system that we won't quit, that we can take a break and we can find support, but we won't quit. Um, has helped us to make that as an agreement because it was very easy for some of us to like panic and be like, I'm done. This is it by plural association (laughs) we're we're going uh we don't deserve this or we don't need this or we don't want this or this is our like private like it's not like it's my face on tv right it's not the plural association logo um and so supporting each other inside but also having support outside fully agree and we've been so grateful to be in contact with you redwoods and with other people who have participated in the media um, when everything went went wrong here and like we called you in panic and we called other people in panic like god I need to vent or like this happened or what do I yeah. do or how do I form this in a way where they don't edit it out because it's important so yeah thank you for your support and to everyone else who has supported us uh, over the years doing this we really appreciate it and I don't think we could have done it without support of other people yeah and I appreciate you yeah I mean it's hard work. And I think we got to be there for each other. And I appreciate you mentioning Gene Reisman and elders, because obviously like, you know, if we talk about plurals broadly defined and plural is an inclusive term as we use it, you know, MPD systems on TV, uh, you know, our generation hasn't been on anything like an Oprah at the, I mean, there's been some folks who have been on big major documentaries and things like that in contemporary times, but I think part of the beauty of this community is that 
regardless of the labels that you personally use, a lot of people can relate to seeing a switch happen or even hearing about a story. Like I think about the Trudy Chase and the Troops interview uh, from, from Oprah. There's just so much. I wouldn't use the language that, that she uses, nor would I use some of the language that I see. Like, uh, you know, even in the panel that I was on with uh, Anthony Padilla, different language from different systems. But I deeply related to all the sharings of everyone in that panel. And I deeply relate to systems of the past. And I think that's the power of like a strong piece of media. Like the Anthony Padilla video is now the top video uh, result for dissociative identity disorder. And that I could be part of something like that and uh, try to share our authentic uh, being, which is an expression of so many systems we've been meeting since we first met our first system, you know, uh, who wasn't ashamed to be who they were back in 2013. Uh, it's, to, it's 2021 now, you know, we are impacted by every system we've met. And, and so I, that's also what motivates us to keep going. And also, you know, I don't know where I'll be in 20 years, but I hope that someone in our community makes something that systems 20 years from now look back on and say, wow, that's maybe not the, exactly the terms or experience, but like, wow, I can really see how that helped change things, mm. um, you know, and helped it be better today, you know, uh, and any of us, not just you or us, but any of us watching could be the system that happens to be the system that's in that one breakthrough piece. It doesn't have to be us. And I don't think you think it has to be you. I think that we get to the positions that we get to and we try to take the opportunities that we can. We're building a movement. I think that's what one of the things that's amazing about the Plural Association is it's one of the first plural projects that's not, you know, this system's brand, you know? Uh, even like us we're, with the Redwood Circle, like it's still like us. The Plural Association, like, to aspire to something that's like broad like that is really powerful. And I think the future directors of the plural association after you, because hopefully it continues past when, you know, whenever you decide to uh, hand off the, the torch, you know, like that you're creating a platform too, that will hopefully be something that people get interviews for and things like that. Or, or, and, you know, like, I hope there are many be, be, I hope there will be many plural organizations and that all of them will have like hired media specialists who help their staff like get ready because we're just kind of doing it on our own and like as a community. And I'm happy to talk about it more with anyone. And as, as I know you are as well, like, uh, you know, if, if anyone sees kind of what we're doing and is like, oh, I want to, I want to know more. Or if you get into an experience, if you get an email or somebody's like, you know, we've, we've both turned down interviews, not definitely. a ton. It's not like I have everyone knocking on my door all the time, but there's definitely been things where it was just like, I didn't have the time or it was just, I could tell from how they worded it, that the framing seemed off, you know, pick and choose kind of stuff. You know, be discerning. They need us. Yeah. They need us to do their job. We're doing them a huge service, usually unpaid, uh, giving our time to them to help them do their job. I really find it annoying when people are like, oh, so fascinating, you know? But like, we, uh, we can also own that we know things that the vast majority of humanity has ignored, stuffed down, set aside for generations. And we do get to be that breakthrough. Um, and we can own that and demand contract terms accordingly. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Let's finish with what is your dream form of media or who would you love to be interviewed by? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the dream that I have right now is that a Hollywood studio watches this and thinks, wow, it's not just that we need a plural actor or a plural director. We need an entire team. Let's spend millions of dollars on giving an entire team team the opportunity to create what they want to create. I don't know. At the end of some training program, somehow a plural team forms 
and we get to make some, and we can work with singlets as consultants about the singlet experience because it's kind of strange and we don't know what their experience <laughs> is like and we need, we need some reference, but mostly a plural run team. And I would just love to make something awesome that, that uh, has like a really strong creative vision. Like I would just love that freedom to play where we're not like only have five minutes and we have to like think about all things, but just like create it another world. I don't know, some type of film in which uh, maybe it's, it's more common to be plural than it is to be singlet, just like that kind of a world. I think would be really awesome to, to play in. If I was gonna do an interview, seven to 10 minute uh, documentary on the homepage of the New York Times, like they do those little like videos, I would love to just do like a, the future of like the plural movement or something and um, just be like, uh, that would be awesome. How about you all? That's great, I love that. Um, I'd love a movie about inner worlds where actual people live. That'd be great. Mm. Uh, preferably like by a gateway system or something so we can like go out and go to other places. I think that would be absolutely epic. Um, wow. I would love to interview either Brene Brown, Jim Van Ols, which is a Dutch psychiatrist who okay. treats people who are um, schizophrenic, but he actually talks to their voices, calls them by name, asks in mm. the next session to talk to them. Seems mm. pretty plural friendly <laughs> to me. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe Judith Butler to discuss gender versus personality and especially as plurals, um, how that would work versus formativity. It sounds like each of us is going to need to do more than one more piece of media in our careers. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot more to do. A lot of range in these systems. Yeah. Thank, and thanks everyone at home. Uh, as you can tell, we have too many ideas and not enough bodies to make them all happen. So we need you all to also get involved. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you see a plural making something, even if it's imperfect, give it a little boost. Uh, and also uh, try to make your own content that also helps realize your own vision. I think that's something that helps us keep peace of mind is that we don't rely on media alone, right? We have other different strategies that we're organizing that do, when I run a small meeting, sometimes that feels like my little plural utopia for an hour uh, that only 15 systems experience. But, you know, that is really generative and important and, and helps me recharge. Um, and honestly, like, I can't imagine what the media landscape could be like in even 10 years. Mm -hmm. And all of us are going to be part of that, uh, making that come true. And I, I can't wait to see all the talent and cutting edge, you know, as, as a millennial, what you got, Gen Z, what you got? <laughs> I want to see it. I want to see it happen. Also, like people of all ages, you know, it, this is becoming our time. You know, this is our time. I really think that as a movement, like, I don't know, that we even have our own conference like this for a, even just for one day a year. Like, there's so much potential. So just, you know, through all the tough times, I think, you know, Stronghold and us have survived different things in our lives. It's pretty awesome that we've been through what we've been through and we've, we're making what we're making, you know? Yeah. And not everyone gets that opportunity. And I think, you know... Uh, you all hold that responsibility well. It's an honor to be part of this movement, to be part of this conference. Thank you for having us. So the Plural Association Nonprofit has an announcement to make talking about TV. We are starting a OTT TV service, which means that plurals who have a YouTube channel can send us selected videos and we put them in a playlist. And then we can play that on Amazon Fire Stick TV or Google um, Chromecast or Roku TV and so that way we can reach a lot of people and we think it's super exciting opportunity for plurals to reach a new audience and um, oh. yeah it's called plurality.tv and soon it will be online so it'll be kind of like a Netflix but for plurality yes exactly Netflix so you like plurality. go to the app and you'll have it like next to your Disney Plus and your Netflix and your Hulu. And you'll be like, I'm going to go to the plurality thing and watch plural content. 
Yes, exactly like that. Amazing. Yes. That's so exciting. I can't, that, that, that's really mm, multi-channel distribution of plural right? content. Yeah. <laughs> So if you are a plural content creator and you have YouTube videos that you want to play on TV, feel free to contact us and we will uh, uh, talk with you to get you into the program. That's awesome. Later, if like plurals make movies and stuff, could it also like be on there? I like indie, an, so. a plural indie movie? Yeah, I yeah, think like so. Any, I mean, you can upload of, videos as yeah, well yeah. directly into the platform. It's just a lot easier to work with YouTube playlists. Right, right, right. We want to make it a bigger project with a lot of uh, contributing plurals. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we can definitely do that. That's awesome. Yeah. Free? For for you, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for me, no. But for no, you, no, no. yes. Like for, for viewers. Yes, for definitely. You. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's not yeah. like you have to pay ten dollars a month. No, 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 no. We're not doing any subscription. Um, it's just going to on there, awesome. but we will like uh, maybe announce the conference on there or ask for a donation uh, every so many. Oh, hours nice like, plural commercials, right? Like, yeah, yeah, something like that. I could see some of our system members as like a plural commercial creators. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah super Great. exciting project. Hey, so. congrats! Yeah, thank you hey. so much. All right. Well, we'll all see you in the Q and A. Yeah, see you in the Q and A. And I'll Thank also you. see you in the Q and A. And I'll <laughs> also see you in the Q and A. And a bunch of us others will also see you in the Q and A. Thanks, Stronghold. Yeah. Thank you, Redwood, so much for participating in this uh, in this project with us for the keynote session for the Plural Positivity World Conference 2021. We really appreciate it. Power to the plurals. Power to the plurals.